Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today I'm going to show you how to install Windows as a virtual machine within Ubuntu. To show you this working, to start off with, I have an application installed on my machine called GNOME Boxes. And you'll see I have Microsoft Windows 11 installed. And here I am inside of Windows 11 within GNOME Boxes and everything works as it should do. I can use all the same applications that I would normally use with Windows. If I want to leave I just go to the top of the screen and I press this button here. I can also shut down the virtual machine. And as you can see, I'm back at GNOME Boxes, where I can select another machine or add in a new one. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to follow to install Windows on top of Ubuntu. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open a web browser. I've installed Google Chrome, but by default, the web browser is Firefox. So what you want to do is go to microsoft.com forward slash software hyphen download forward slash Windows 11. Now you want to skip the installation assistant and you want to skip this installation media. What you want to do is download Windows 11 ISO image for x64 devices. So I'm going to select that one there. Uh, it gives you some instructions of what you need to do and then you click download now. You have to select the product language so in this case I'm going for English and then I'm going to click confirm. And then it will give you this 64-bit download option so click that and you'll see it starts downloading and it will download in about 14 to 15 minutes depending on your internet connection. Um, obviously uh, the faster your internet connection the better. The next step is to install GNOME boxes. So within Ubuntu you click on the App Center icon and you search for boxes. You search for the known boxes. And you'll see this option here. Now you'll see that I've already got it ins installed, so it says open, but for you it will say install, and all you have to do is click install. It takes a few minutes for it to install, but once it's there, you can then open it. To open boxes, you go to the show apps icon and you search for boxes. And you click this icon here. To add in a new Windows drive, you click on the plus symbol and you want to install from file and you go to your downloads folder and you select the Windows ISO image that you downloaded previously and then you click open you give your virtual machine a name so I'm going to call my Windows 11 demo and the operating system should already have been chosen and you can choose whether to use BIOS or UEFI firmware now it's key that you sort out the memory situation because it's very low by default. So we want um, about eight gigabytes. Obviously you have to judge this based on the hardware you're using, but realistically eight gigabytes is what you'll need to use. And for storage, you also need about a hundred gigabytes. And then you're just going to click create. 
So we can go for UEFI or you can go for BIOS, it's up to you. When you get to this screen, you want to press the Shift and F10 key. And then you want to type regedit. You want to go to HK Local Machine, System, and Setup. And you need to create a new key. So if you're on Setup, you right click and you choose New, and then you choose Key. And you want to call it Lab Config. So just copy what I'm typing on the screen here. Now in here you need to create three new D word values. The first one's called bypass TPM check. And you double click it and you type in the number one. You want to create another one called and it's again D word value and you want to call bypass secure boot check double click and then to one and then add another D word value by using right click and you bypass RAM check double click enter one then you close this window you close this window and then you choose your language choose your time format so in my case United Kingdom and your keyboard input method should automatically sort itself out now if we click next you have the install now option so we're going to do that and setup is starting if you have a product key you can enter it now or you can select I don't have a product key and then you choose the version you want so I'm going to choose Windows 11 home and click next obviously if you haven't got a key you'll need to create one later on and then you want to accept the license agreement click next you need to choose custom install windows only and then you want to choose the unallocated space that you created earlier this is your virtual hard drive and click next windows will now copy the files it will get the files ready for installation it will install features install updates and then you'll have finishing up Uh, you can see now that Windows is about to restart, so we're going to let that happen. And you see up here it's now saying installing. If you click into it, you can see the Windows icon appear. So here we are at the setup screen. Um, is this the right country or region? Yes, it is. So we're going to select yes. So now is this the right keyboard? No, it's not. We kind of want the English UK one. I'm not sure why they order it the way they do, um, but uh, there we go, United Kingdom. Select yes. Would you like to add a second layout? Skip that. As you can see, we're now in the realms of updates and Windows installing itself for the first time, giving you nice glitzy messages to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. So uh, first off you need to name your device, so we're going to call this Gary Windows Demo. Next. So here, here we are, you can sign in to your account. You can create an account if you haven't got one, I am just going to sign in. Uh, 
Uh, so now we're going to click restore from this PC. I mean, it's up to you whether you do this stuff. This is just Windows basic setup. You can create a pin to log in. I'm just going to put in a simple one just for the purpose of this demo. I'm going to delete the uh, machine shortly after I create it. So uh, it's not going to be around for very long. Uh, I don't want to do any of this stuff. I'm going to do as minimal as possible. So all these questions like find my device um, and all the diagnostic data. It's interesting they give you minimal only. You can't say no to any of it. Uh, it's up to you whether you say yes or no to these things, but I say no to most of them. Uh, you can customise your experience if you want to. I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to skip the use the phone from the PC. It's interesting uh, people think that Linux is difficult to install. I mean, installing Windows is just a never-ending series of question after question after question, most of them things that you probably don't want to do. You've seen that I chose not to back up my files, only because this is a demo machine. Normally I do, actually. I don't want to import browser settings. And still it's going. Do you want Office 365? I'm going to decline that. Do you want more storage? I'm going to decline that. For Windows 11 is a giant sales pitch. Uh, do you want Game Pass? No, I'm going to skip that. And we're back at checking for updates because why not? There's more and more updates to install. And here we are at the bit where it says this may take a few minutes as it's installed in all your settings and things like that. So just let it do its stuff and eventually it will boot to your login screen. So here we are inside Windows 11. Now the first thing you're going to notice is if I hit the full screen button, it doesn't actually go full screen you've only got the resolution that you have here. So what you want to be able to do is right click here on your Windows desktop, click display settings and change the display resolution um, to the display resolution of your actual monitor. So in my case it's 1920 by 1080 and then you click keep changes. Now if I press the arrows, you can see I go full screen. Now it doesn't end there I'm afraid. Uh, it is possible that when you go in to the display settings, it doesn't give you the option to scale up to the resolution that you want to be able to. And to solve this issue, you will need something called a spice agent. And that's what I'll show you now. So I have shut down the Windows Virtual Machine and so I've got nothing running. So open a terminal, Control alt t type sudo app search and we're looking for spice client gtk. And this is a simple client for interacting with spice servers so we're going to install that. So sudo apt install spice-client-gtk and you also want to sudo apt search for spice vd agent and that's a spice agent for Linux so we're going to install that. And that should be all you need to be able to resize your Windows 11. So if you go into display settings, now if I go full screen, you can see I can do that. I can also exit full screen. 
Now if you go to the uh, preferences, you can see uh, details about the virtual machine. So you can go into devices and shares and to be able to share folders you have to have a Spice WebDAV installed. Go into your windows and open a web browser. You want to type spice spaced org. Forward slash download. Dot HTML. You want to scroll down to the Windows binaries and you want to click on this Spice Guest Tools. Then you want to click on Open File. Incidentally, if it doesn't open straight away, you can go to uh, Windows Explorer, go to the Downloads folder and double click. Uh, select Yes when the option appears. And Yes again. We can minimize this window now. Now you just want to click Next. I agree. And the file should extract. Now what this will give you is the ability to uh, drag and drop into your guest machine and set up file shares between the host and the Windows PC. So Ubuntu and Windows can work together. It will also help you if you're still struggling with resizing your uh, window. So between the mixture of installing the Spice 3D agent and on the Windows machine installing the Spice tools, you should be able to resize your display. And it says, would you like to install this device driver? Yes, you do. And that's it, Spice guest tools should now be installed. So now you should be able to right click and definitely you should be able to change your resolution. Now you can see I already could. Let's see what else you can do. Uh, so we'll close that. What we're going to do is we're going to take a picture from the pictures folder and we're going to open up the GNOME boxes and we're going to make it slightly smaller like this and we're going to see can we drag onto this machine. Yes we can. And that really is the end of the video. In today's video I showed you how to set up GNOME boxes, how to install Microsoft Windows, how to get past the TPM checks, how to install the Spice tools to resize your screen resolution and enable drag and drop between your host and your guest machine. If you like the video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.